I'm delighted to welcome Noel Hara to the NTTXE video cast. Noel Hara is CTO of Public Sector for NTT Data. Welcome to the video cast. Thank you, Megan, for having me. Very it's wonderful to, to have you here. Yeah, so one of the things that I find very inspiring about you, Noel, is that you're bringing innovation into public sector and and, and public sector is actually really innovative. Is, is that right? It really is. And what, what's really exciting about my role is that NTT has all of this innovation coming from around the world, this massive innovation budget. People actually, clients look at me when I tell them $3.6 billion a year in innovation. Like, really? How, how does that happen? And then how do we actually take that, and I call it public sectorizing it, bringing that into the government customer and helping them provide a better customer experience or citizen experience to uh, people out there, as well as innovate how they're actually working internally into their organizations and adding efficiencies to their organization with that innovation. Wow, that sounds like just such an enormous topic. But I know today you wanted to zero in on AI and understanding a bit more about how we're using AI with customers and in public sector and how maybe Gen AI in particular is evolving. Yeah, and it's really interesting because Gen AI, for example, you know, AI has been around, AI has been in public sector, it's been in public safety for a number of years. You know, many, many different use cases. Gen AI hit the market, you know, uh, two years ago and everybody heard about it and everybody started using it in their personal lives. And then I started getting invited to meetings which were very general in nature. Tell me about this AI thing. Like it was brand new, which Gen AI was brand new. It's really changing the way that people are gonna, gonna interact uh, with, with websites and with citizen services, but it's really, brought in this conversation around AI in general. And I used to start conversations say, do you mean generative AI or just AI in general and kind of what's been out there in the market? But in the last few months, we've really seen people start asking me, how do we actually impact our business? How do we bring specific use cases to the market? Um, so what are some of those use cases? So it's interesting. So we, we kind of look and we say, there's some internal use cases and there's some external use cases. So everybody wants to start. How do we make the citizen's life better? How do we make it easier to do business with government? If you look at things, you know, how do I renew my passport? How do I get a driver's license? You have to go and hunt and peck around the web. You hope you find the right answer. Using generative AI, you could just simply type the question out and it will come back with an answer with very specific instruction. You don't have to go dig around. You could find out one of the biggest benefits I think we're gonna see is in uh, human services. What types of social programs do I qualify for? Here's some things about me and my family, and I, I'm, I, you know, somebody might be struggling. Here's what my situation is. They'll say, here are the programs you, you're eligible for. Would you like to apply now? Instead of going and trying to apply for a program, finding out you didn't qualify, not being given any guidance as to what programs you might qualify for in the future. Wow, that's amazing. Very concrete examples of you know data that's mm -hmm. not being looked at through a billion parameters. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the, basically the website data, mm -hmm. but it really makes a, a difference. It does. Yeah. So, um, well, there's all this hype. Um, and um, I know that there's something very near and dear to your heart, public safety. How, how are they using it there? Well, public safety is a personal passion of mine. So a little, little bit about me and kind of what you know, I've always been. I've always been engaged in it, but then I actually live in the Chicago suburbs. My son was actually marching in the Highland Park Parade when the July 4th shooting happened a couple of years ago. And that's really where I said, how do we look at the technology that NTT has to keep communities safe? And we already had some technology in our smart cities platform. So if you look at city of Las Vegas and some other places where we were looking at use cases around, is there a car driving the wrong way down the street? Is, uh, is there a, crowd gathering somewhere that wasn't expected to happen. And I kind of looked at that and said, we have all this great technology. What are other use cases that we could use to keep communities safe? So there's two projects that we're working on right now that I'm really excited about. One, we're working with a border town and they're really looking at how do they use our smart technology along with our private cellular P5G technology to enable their public safety. They have, you know, they're putting a network of cameras all over the city. They're looking for things. Are people camping in the parks, in the public parks? Are people illegally dumping things, monitoring their downtown for crowds that are gathering, kind of similar to what we're doing in Las Vegas. But then I looked at it and, you know, I've got, I've got two high school students and, you know, one of them who was in that uh, event uh, on July 4th. Mm -hmm. So I said, how do we use this to keep our students safe? 
And uh, one of our clients actually hired us to go and put some school safety technology into their schools. We're installing these panic buttons into the schools. We're installing door access control systems into the schools. But I looked at that and said, all of the things that are being installed in schools today are these point solutions that require someone to react. I call it the see something, say something. So there's a panic button, but somebody has to see an event happen and go and push the button. I said, we have this smart technology. What can we do with that? So we took some NTT investment and we developed to take that and see what it looks like inside of a school. And we're doing things inside of a school like did a door open when it wasn't supposed to open? Now, when that happens, I describe it as kind of the ring doorbell footage where the security officer gets an immediate alert to go and look at it. And then they decide, was that something we should lock down the school for? Or was that a truant student that's sneaking out to go to lunch and maybe we just have to send them to the dean for disciplinary action? Big one, we're doing weapons detection. So if the machine vision, the AI of the system, awesome. sees somebody pull out a gun, it immediately can trigger a lockdown call the police so we're not losing those precious seconds waiting for somebody to see something and actually react and that's to it. part of our smart platform to immediately call the police mm -hmm. right um to have those um that software is already built correct correct so so the software will identify the potential threat so a smart platform knows what normal conditions are so normal conditions obviously there's no there's no gun or knife right in, in the video but also there's a door that you know maybe it opens in the morning maybe it opens in the afternoon at 11 o'clock on a tuesday it's never supposed to open that's an abnormal condition it'll immediately send an alert to somebody that they should you know it might not lock down the school because more likely than not it's somebody sneaking out for a smoke that that happens pretty regularly yeah but it, it will let somebody know you have to look at this right now so there's going to be some false alerts that are mm -hmm. going to happen from something like this. But certainly that will be more efficient and effective than the see something, do something, exactly. right? Because something bad has to happen in order to push the panic button. Um, so uh, w when we think about our partnerships, when we think about, you know, obviously we're not doing this alone. There are a lot of companies out there. Help us understand how you work with the partner ecosystem. Yeah, so this is actually something that is really exciting for NTT data and how we're positioned in the ecosystem. I typically say, so we have NTT data as an expert in government and we're an expert in technology. Our clients are experts in their business and the mission that they're delivering to the citizen. And then we have this ecosystem of top tier partners who happen to be the industry leaders in artificial intelligence. And that's partners like Microsoft, AWS, and Google on the hyperscaler side, but also partners like ServiceNow and Snowflake and IBM, where they're actually building out these cutting edge technologies. They're the industry leaders in generative AI, but how do you actually take their platform and enable the mission use case from the client? That's where we could come in and help the customer understand which platform is best for the use case, what is the use case, what's the outcome that we're, we're really shooting for, and actually build out those technologies that we could deliver to the customer. Well, it's amazing to know that and to maybe highlight a little bit on the fact that you have this partner that really knows these large, complex uh, organizations and the thousands of technologies and um, also use cases, right, um, to bring to bear, especially in public sector where, you know, they're usually not going to ha necessarily have the tech experts working for them. Yeah, it's it's interesting. So what, what's happening now in public sector is all of these vendors that are out there are partners and, and other companies are out there saying, hey, we have this tool. You should buy our tool. But how do you actually enable that tool to deliver on the mission? That's where they need the help. And which tool is the right tool for the job? Because everybody's tool they think is the best tool. But right. Is, which one's the right one for the job? The other one that's interesting is we're finding there's a lot of point solutions out there. They solve one problem. They were purpose built to solve one problem. That's great. We could get it in there fast. We could get it in there cheap. But what happens when I have 12 problems I'm solving? If I need 12 different technologies, now I need to train people on 12 different technologies. Yeah. Becomes very, very, very hard difficult. in public sector. You mm -hmm. just don't have the staff for that um, and the business case for mm -hmm. um, for using so many different technologies. Well, thank you so much for the mm -hmm. time, Noel. It's been great to chat with you. I hope you come back. Uh, we'd love mm -hmm. to bring one of our public sector clients on with you and chat about mm -hmm. how they're implementing some of these um, use cases and technologies. I would love the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Thank you.